Shabbat Shalom. What's up, folks? It's Ed. Nice, brisk. Fall morning here in Baltimore. And for those of you that didn't know, I am from Baltimore. Been here my whole life, pretty much. A long time. And my hometown, Baltimore, is in the news lately. If any of y'all following, um, Congressman Elijah Cummings just recently passed away. And I'd like to say, um, sorry for your loss to any of his family members and friends that might be going through it. I didn't know, um, Congressman. Personally, I never met him. But, um... Over a year ago, I did write an email, a letter, send a video to the congressman about my uh, my arrest, my detainment um, pertaining to the police pulling me over without jurisdiction or um, a traffic stop, an unlawful traffic stop. Uh, I sent them my video, uh, all my notes, all my law notes that was pertaining to the case, and I haven't heard from them, so I figured that, um, you know, they can't answer everybody back. It's a busy, busy congressman, you dig it? So what was more interesting, um, after the fact that I recently found out that he was actually barred, he has got his jurist doctorate in um, 1976, and um, when anybody that's representing you, you would think that that would be like any intelligent person wants you a part of something, you need to know the rules or the bylaws that would make that thing tick. And especially with, uh, like, uh, Congressman Cummings going into law. You know, like I said, he, uh, got his Juris Doctorate in 76 and he practiced law. So let me, let me pull him up on Wikipedia real quick. I believe it was 19 years that he, that he practiced law. So, let me see. Yep, here we go. Uh, Cummings graduated from law school at the University of Maryland School of Law, receiving his Juris Doctorate in 1976 and was admitted to the State Bar Association later that year. He practiced law for 19 years before being elected to the, to the House in 1976. So, yeah, Congressman, um, he practiced law, he knows law, so... That would be the first thing that you would you would know if you're going to defend the people and have their best interest is actually um, what law is. And you, you, U.S. House of Representative Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure, Subcommittee on Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation, Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure. And he's a lawyer, so. Let's look at what the word transportation means by law, all right? I'm going to pull this word up. Per black law dictionary, okay? Not per me, because my definition of driver is just getting behind the wheel of a car and going out there and driving. But we're not talking about my definition. We're not talking about your definition. We're talking about by law, you know, what the definition of words is, because that's what an officer of the law is going to be able to charge you with, right? He's going to be able to charge you with you breaking the law. So let's see what transportation means by law. Transportation. Enjoy the music while I, while I stumble through this. Transportation. Black Law Dictionary, what is transportation, the definition of? Transportation of removal, removal of goods or persons from one place to another by a carrier. See railroad company versus track. Commerce, coin versus Brimson. It's a criminal law of species, a species of punishment consisting in removing the criminal from his own country to another. Usually a penal colony there to remain exiled. Well, that's something different. Transportation. I guess that's telling you what you could transport. So the removal of goods or persons from one place to another by a carrier. Let's see what a carrier is. This is by law, y'all, not by me, because we're dealing with law. And uh, Congressman Cummings was a lawyer, so. And this was his 
his area, his committee. Carrier is one who undertakes to transport persons or property from place to place by any means of conveyance and with or without compensation. Carrier, with or without compensation. Let's see where the driver is, Baba. Bear with me, folks. You know, it's a it's Friday, it's the weekend. Just enjoy, and maybe you'll actually learn something because we so used to just passing stuff down. We need to take time out, time out for yourself, honestly, to see what you are part of, to see who actually has your best interest at heart, or do the people that you believe have your best interest at heart just just a made to appear that. So you have to know what your best interests are, and your interests are what the law is and the law protects that's that's all that the law does it doesn't give you anything to protect what you have so let's see driver one employee in conducting a coach carriage wagon or other vehicle with horses mules or other animals or a bicycle tricycle or motor car though not a street railroad car see davis versus testament um, the law requires every driver operating a motor vehicle on the public streets and roadway to obtain a state-issued license before doing so. Do you hear that? The law requires every driver operating a law, a motor vehicle on the public street and roadway to obtain a state-issued license before doing so. So if you're going to drive, you have to be issued a state license. This is law. If you're not going to drive, if you're not driving, if you're not employed and conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle, <clears throat> you by law are not a driver. Black's Law Dictionary. One employed and conducting a coach, carriage, wagon, or other vehicle with horses, mules, or other animals, or bicycle, tricycle, or motor cars, or not a street railroad car, C. Davis versus Pessimist. So, I see a lot of people talking about all the civil rights, or he stood up, I'm back to Congressman Cummings, he stood up for our civil rights, they're gonna miss him, I'm like, are you missing his job, or are you missing him personally, or have you seen any of the fruit? of the things that he did that you gonna miss. What, what is it that he did? I believe we had that Freddie Gray incident here in Baltimore. You know, and it's, it's more the same what laws are. Do these police actually have the right to walk up to you and demand license or demand ID? And resoundingly, no. The answer by law is no. And we have other, other members of government, policy, a political group, this organization, that organization, that you trust with having your best interest. And I'm not saying anything negative about Count Congressman coming, but I am showing you what the law is. And if there's going to be people that you put on the forefront that you want to protect your interests, are you sure that they're protecting your best interests? Do you even know what your best interests are by law? Do you does that person that you have in that position, that you voted in that position repeatedly, are, are they transparent with you? You know, we we let that face, we let the face and the color tell us something that's not so. So I know people you're gonna miss with death and it's gonna leave a void in people's lives, but I, I didn't know the congressman you know, personally. The only kind of relationship I should have had with him is a professional one and him protecting my best interest. But by me finding this law out, these things on my own, with, with no formal uh, law training, no law school, nothing like that. The only thing you need to know about law is what happens when somebody does something to you. That's the law because then you know what happens to you if you do something to somebody else. The law is one of those things that self-perpetuates. What you don't want done to you is generally what you can't do to somebody else. And this constitution is just a means to protect everything that you was born with. 
unconstitutional. No man can run up on you and demand anything from you because, by God, you don't owe the man another thing. Until you trespass or transgress that man personally, you haven't broken the law. See, we have politics to put policies in place where it can be an invisible thing that never happened. But this group, this, this bigger than you group will say, okay, we don't think that you should be able to have an abortion if you want to, lady. And over a period of time, you think that's the law because you don't want to stand on your constitutional right that nobody has a right or a hand over you. That's easy. There's so many things in here that our black lawyers, our black judges, our black leaders too busy seeing how much money that they might lose if they do say these things. You know, if you're on a clan, you're getting paid by the clan. Just because you're speaking out and you're talking back to the clan, you're still carrying out the job. They don't give a fuck about your nigga back talk. As long as you carry the job out, bottom line is what? The fucking bottom line. So I'm not saying that anything negative. You know, I want people to take this as an attack on Congressman Cummins because I know he's been around and he's probably seen some hateful shit. And I'm not saying he's never been under attack for many of that white supremacy shit. But once you're inside of the system and you get a taste of another life, you, you tend to change your tune. You see it with shit the wire. Look at fucking Stringer Bell. How the fuck you get killed trying to play somebody else's game? That's real shit. I know it's just, just a movie, Baltimore, not a movie, but y'all know what it is? One person kept his eyes on where he was at, who he was dealing with. He got out of line, got in something completely different and over your head. Now they consumed with it. That wasn't your initial thing. You were out to do one thing and lost sight of what you were there for. Then you became that thing. And people... You're getting told what your opinion is, so I'm not, I'm not attacking the congressman personally. I just want to see his fruit, and I just pointed something out, you know, that, that could have been his fruit. He was a lawyer, not me. This is law. It's all kinds of law. It's simple as you raising a question. You know what law is? This is what law is for anybody that don't know. You know, somebody has to prove you guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. And when they accuse you, they have to bring the proof. You know, somebody says you did something, that's fine. Make them prove it. That's how law works. Will black attorneys tell you that? No, they won't because the bar is how they eat. So they got to side with the system. It don't matter what they think, how much back talk that they give the system. They're not lawyers for free, right? Me, law is free. Why would not tell anybody this for free? As a free person, information is free. Why would I need money to help people in law? You have rights that you were born with. If I can help you discover those, why would not? Why would I need to be in politics or policy to want the same thing for you that I want for myself free of charge? So when I'm talking about driving, the definition of driving, that's it, cut and dry. You maneuver through a lot of things with simply asking, how did you get this power over me? Your income taxes, the same way. Who do you owe for your labor? You know, but if you're making enough money, i.e. some of these congressmen, councilmen, what you give back to the system don't matter. It's just the price of doing business. So if you're pulling down millions of dollars and you come from a family where y'all was barely making 8000 a year, 15000 a year, of course you're going to play ball. Your integrity's gone instantly. So who is your black leaders? What changed with these black leaders? Because it's not that hard. Law is absolute. Either you're breaking the law or you're not. We got so many black... Negroes, African Americans in jail for drug charges. Something that's really invisible, a drug charge. Something that you did to yourself. You know, and, and nobody can come to court and say you did something to them by you using drugs. You know, that that's a social issue. That's a problem with yourself. That's like drinking too much, eating too much. 
that's a social disorder. They're criminalizing it because they can't get money from it. And you agree. You try to fight the charge. You got to fight the jurisdiction. Ask them, when did they become your legal guardian, your custodial controller? that they can tell you what and what not to put in your physical body because you possess yourself. You are self-lord and master. These are the maxims of the law. And people say common law like it's dirty. No, that's all law is. It's common, common sense. What you don't want taken from you, don't take from somebody. It's really simple, but what comes into play is policy of men when they think they should have something that they didn't work for that's not theirs, and they can't outright take it. So they come up with policies and say, you got to give it up on behalf of X, Y, Z. Okay, so they showing up at your door. Now it's your job to say, okay, show me where and why I have to con conform to that. And that's what will never happen because you being born of, I'm sorry, y'all, it's going to hurt, of the creator God. I know you atheist types and all you other witchy fools and back to Africa type suckers. I, I, I understand, but the way they see it, is that it's a creator that created everything down here equal. And based on that, they can't touch you unless you touch another creation. Transgressing another man or bringing harm to another being. Someone that can come to court, sit across from you and say, he did this to me, he took that from me, he damaged that of mine. That's it. Other than that, it's made up. We have a lot of faces that look like yours in high places that deal in policy and he lets you deal in policy they might snap and talk shit but the check comes from that table and the master don't mind you talking shit especially if you want to generate them some revenue talking shit and that's what it's all about because anybody with a face that looks like ours that's not talking about law law is absolute not policy law if they're not talking about law and their face looks like yours and mine, you have to honestly ask yourself, do they have your best interest at heart? Shalom.